shall we start yeah we can start okay so namaskar to all uh, today uh, we are going to uh, uh, we are we will talk on role of anti egfrs in management of locally advanced head and neck cancers as we all know head and neck cancers over 20 years the the treatment modalities have expanded and new terms have come in uh, combined modality therapy new surgical techniques new radiotherapeutic techniques and multidisciplinary approaches so i would like to welcome dr hitesh jekka to enlighten us more on this topic to introduce dr jekka uh, he is uh, he has done his mbbs from guwahati medical college guwahati he is md medicine uh, from assam medical college uh, dibrugarh uh, he attended summer school in oncology 2017 tata memorial hospital mumbai he completed two years fellowship in medical oncology adult solid tumor at state cancer institute guwahati currently working as consultant medical oncologist at guwahati medical college guwahati sir please okay thank you thank you for your introduction and first of all i want to thank um environmental and occupational health is a connect webinar <clears throat> series for having me to for giving me this opportunity and i want to thank biocon pharmaceuticals for providing all the uh, slides and their support so first of all um, let me share my slides Uh, sir should i share from here if if you are facing any problem okay like, let me give um, few minute one minute let me okay, check okay. i if okay. i i can share this option is there na one share hello yes sir yes sir there is one green green option there sir share. the name of share screen so i i can i can share from here sir i i have uh, means i have saved the your presentation i can share you can so do i have modified the slides few so okay. uh, i am looking for those slide let me check if possible yes sir no i'm not getting those now mr shivang you can share uh, the slide yes sir yes sir yes sir i i will share i will share yes i hope dr hitesh this is okay with you yeah yeah right right
Okay. So today we are going to discuss the role of anti-EGF or monocular antibodies in locally advanced squamous cell head and neck cancer. As we are, uh, uh, am I audible to all? Yes, Dr. Hidesh, you audible. So as you all know, the head and neck cancer is very much common in India and Northeastern state. Uh, these are a hub of head and neck cancer particularly related to tobacco and also HPV infections. So I'm going to discuss about these topics uh, on this topic in following heading that EGFR expression in head and neck cancer and what is the um, chemo radiation role and what is the role of nimotuzumab in case of um, head and neck squamous cell car carcinoma. So next slide. So there are some facts that uh, hereditary carcinoma these are a aggressive malignancies and often this presents in a locally advanced state and they have high risks of developing another cancer the second cancer is second malignancy it is very much common in case of hereditary cancer so and this cancer they have easier for our expression and they have big uh, etiology wise they can be divided into hpv positive and hpv negative hereditary cancer so, and until then, surgery is the primary option for entire part of the head and neck malignancies. While chemo radiation, it also is an important part. But with chemo radiation, beyond chemo radiation, we have some treatment gradually improving, like monoclonal antibody using monoclonal antibody. So, we're going to discuss on the role of monoclonal antibody in case of chemo in case of head and neck cancer. Next slide. So these are the causes of different causes of head and, um, uh, malignancies in head and neck region. Like most important is tobacco, second is alcohol, then diet, betel nut, Epstein Barr virus infections, infection with HPV infections, then uh, gastrointestinal reflux disease. These are various risk factors for head and neck cancer. Then, next slide. So. EGFR expression is one of the important um, important factors in the growth of this head and neck malignancies because this EGFR expression of our expression it leads to angiogenesis it leads to increased proliferation it leads to decrease apoptosis and increased survival also metastasis and invasions so EGFR is an important target uh, for treatment in case of head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. Also, this easier for our expression is associated with poor disease response to treatment, disease progressions and poor survival. Next slide. So various treatment report, uh, in case of chemo radiation, various um, treatments has see, evolved over few last few decades. So the first important trial um, that is from Eldestein et al, which has combined radiation with concurrent cisplatin, that is true equally 100 milligram per meter squared. Previous slide. Previous slide. Okay. So it is in this trial, that 100 mg per meter square, three weekly, it has shown that progression fees survival in radiation alone arm is only 14 months, while in case of chemo radiation and arm, it is 19 months. The second important trial that is the, done by Budak et al. It has combined radiation with mitomycin and 5-FO, and this trial also showing that with only radiation, it is only 11-month progression fee survival, while in case of chemo radiation arm, it is 16 months. Another trial Dennis by Dennis et al., it has combined RT with carboblatin and 5-FU, that is also given as three weekly. Progression free survival with um, radiation alone is 12 months, while in case of progression free survival with chemo radiation is 14 months. The one important trial from Indian perspective done at Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai, by Ghosh and Laskar Ital, that has given a dose of cisplatin as 30 mg per meter squared, and it is given as weekly, and it has shown that Progression fee survival with chemo radiation it is 24 months. That is highest of all the low dose cisplatin. That is 30 mg per meter square. Next slide. 
So this is the five-year local regional control arm with chemo radiation and the benefit in overall survival. Five five years of local regional control with chemo radiation it is forty nine percent, while with only RT it is only thirty two percent, and adjuvant radiation therapy it is twenty seven percent. Then five-year disease-free survival. Only chemo chemo with chemo radiation it is thirty nine percent. Only RT it is twenty five percent, and adjuvant RT it is twenty percent. And overall survival at five years only if it, it is only chemo radiation it is fifty six percent. That is high. Overall survival is also high. And only um, RT radiation it is thirty six months, and adjuvant RT uh, it is forty one point forty one months. Next slide. So various trial has compared uh, chemo radiations with only radiation, and they have found that chemo radiation is the best option to give in patients with adrenal cancer. In case of adju in adjuvant setting, when there is a high risk factor like external extension is present, or when there is a margin positive, or in case of only only if only treatment definitive chemo radiation also given, then cisplatin is the standard of care. So cisplatin with radiation has given um, better overall survival. Next slide. So after cisplatin, there are no much improvement in the uh, uh, in the role of other molecules in case of management in adrenal cancer. So various trial has evaluated the role of neoadjuvant therapy with uh, TPF uh, TPF regimen. They are using cisplatin, five a few, and osidex cells, but they have they have not uh, able to show any improvement in the overall survival. Then other EGFR, then second comes the uh, use of EGFR directed molecules like cetuximab. But cetuximab in compared with the cisplatin also has not shown any improvement in the um, overall survival. So it is, is an alternative to a cisplatin. So now gradually the rule of cetuximab now the other molecular and uh, monocular antibody like nimotuzumab has come. So one trial that is RTOG 0522, it has um, where chemotherapy with that is chemo standard chemotherapy with uh, RT standard chemotherapy is a cisplatin and with cetuximab the four this cetuximab cisplatin and RT is compared with the only cisplatin and RT and this trial has shown that there is no benefit of Combining cetuximab with cisplatin, the overall survival or other disease-free survival is almost similar to cisplatin. No point of adding another molecule. Next slide. Okay, so now other molecules have tried other than cetuximab, like nimotuzumab. Nimotuzumab with chemotherapy, nimotuzumab with only radiation. So these studies, some few studies have shown able to show that nimotuzumab is a is a a uh, new molecule which can give a better overall survival compared to the other molecule these are tested till now. So nimotuzumab with chemotherapy on radiations, it has given a uh, survival benefit of more than 60 months, while nimotuzumab only nimotuzumab with only RT given a benefit of approximate 45 months. Next slide. Okay, so EGFR response. In EGFR expression, it is already, I have told that EGFR expression, it is mainly found in case of hedonic cancer, but other than hedonic cancer, other side where, <coughs> sorry, then other than hedonic cancer, the other, other side where EGFR expression is found is the pancreatic and the bladder cancer, but the, uh, and everywhere, the EGFR FR expression is associated with poor survival, poor disease-free disease survival and poor overall survival. So next slide. So what is the difference between nimotuzumab and cetuximab? Both are monoclonal antibody. So one important difference is that cetuximab, it binding, it depends upon the, it, it not depends upon the EGFR expression. It will independent of the level of EGFR expression. So cetuximab, it can cause binding with the, um, binding to sites where there is low EGFR expression and it can cause the toxicity but while and this binding is also monovalent while the nimotuzumab binding it is bivalent binding and also it get accumulated only those sites where there is a EGFR of our expression is found so by um, biomap that is nimotuzumab it can cause more um, benefit there is a side effect profile 
from the side effect profile also nimotuzumab has the better um, safety safety profile compared to the cetuximab next slide okay this um, already i have told nimotuzumab it needs bivalent binding for stable cell attachment next slide um, nimotu, okay. nimotu, then again, at molecular level also, at immune response also, nimotuzumab has the cost stock with the NK cell, natural killer cell, and direct cytotoxicity. And this direct cytotoxicity generates DC1 polarization and maturation dependent interferon gamma secretions by the N N NK cells. And this cross stock, it, it, it allows the, for the cross presentation of the tumor um, antigens to the cytotoxic CD8 cells. So thereby more killing of these um, tumor cells. Next slide. Okay. So nimotuzumab activate the DC after the crosstalk and NK cell equivalent to DC activation as compared to cetuximab in spite of lower NK triggering. So nimotuzumab induces less upregulation of the inhibitory molecule like PDL1 on the um, uh, direct cytotox cytotoxicity, uh, and, and there is increased immune response. Nimotuzumab it has the ability to increase the immune response against the host immune response against the uh, malignant against the malignant cells so next slide and ctl4 response is also uh, increased in in case cetuximab while in case of nimotuzumab um, the ctl4 response is um, less so um, survival of the tumor cells it become more in case of cetuximab while in case of nimotuzumab the uh, immune mediated um, uh, destruction of the tumor cells also increased. Next slide. So um, the trial, the uh, molecule, the um, biomap that is the nimotuzumab, it came from the study, one landmark study that is the breast based trial, that is the biomap safety and efficacy trial. It is a phase two trial. It is a five years study in upper inoperable advanced squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck. Next slide. So from this trial has uh, shown that there is significant response rate on combining nimotuzumab with chemotherapy and conventional RT. So from this is a phase two trial. From this trial, the landmark phase three trial has come to action. Next slide. So um, this, this trial, the base trial has shown that with the addition of nimotuzumab to conventional chemotherapy, that is the cetuximab and radiation, the in, there is increase in the uh, population-free survival at five years, that is 47.83% in case of the trial arm, nimotuzumab, cisplatin, and RT, while case of in case of control arm, that is chemotherapy with RT, it is only 26.9 months. Next slide. And <clears throat> um, median overall survival is also increased while combining nimotuzumab with chemotherapy with RT. That is five years of survival with in case of nimotuzumab, cisplatin, and RT, it is 57 months and five years um, over um, five year survival rate, it is 57 months. While in while a few um, overall survival rate, it is not safe in case of that this trial arm. While in case of CTRT arm, that is cisplatin and uh, RT arm, it is five year survival rate is only 26 months, that is half. And overall survival is also 20.21.9 months. So median overall survival, it is not yet to reach after five years of follow-up in case of nimotuzumab, that is biomap, cisplatin, and RTM. Next slide. So based on this trial, the um, nimotuzumab, it, it becomes the uh, standard of care in case of patients who are eligible for cisplatin in case of locally advanced head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. <clears throat> and this is the only anti easier for antibody proved to be efficacious in case of locally advanced squamous cell carcinoma, head and neck squamous cell carcinoma, along with cisplatin and RT. Next slide. So this study is mainly done at the Tata Memorial Hospital, uh, Mumbai. And the trial is done is, there is age of the patient is more than 18 years. Number of patient is 536. All newly diagnosed or treatment knife, stage three or stage four, locally at non-metastatic, Head and neck carcinoma. The head and neck carcinoma, it in it the disease sites are included are mainly oropharyngeal carcinoma, laryngeal carcinoma, hypopharynx, and oral cavity. And turn off performance, patients should have a more than 70%. Next slide. 
and they have should have a adequate organ function some disease sites are excluded these are like nasopharyngeal carcinoma salivary gland carcinoma and nasal cavity carcinoma this this disease sites are excluded and prior treatment with radiation or prior treatment with immunotherapy these patients are also excluded so this um, all after considering all the inclusion and exclusion criteria the patients are uh, divided into two arm one is um, trial arm that is the combination of nemotuzumab biomap which is cisplatin with radiation and other is the only cisplatin and radiation next slide so primary endpoint was progression free survival and secondary endpoint were disease free survival local regional control overall survival treatment compliance adverse events and importantly quality of life next slide so this is a how the treatment algorithm how they have made allocations into the groups what are the um, inclusion and exclusion after including and considering the inclusion and exclusion criteria how many patients are left so this is the treatment algorithm the median duration of follow up was around 39.13 month next slide so the basic characteristics the baseline characteristics of the patients it is found that it is almost similar in the both the arm and one important part that most of the patients in this study is the oropharyngeal carcinoma that is oropharyngeal carcinoma it include almost 50% of the patients and t3 t4 stages are more that is 79 to 84% of patients are in the t3 and t4 group and stage 4a that is non metastatic locally advanced non metastatic disease it is 64 to 66% <clears throat> next slide okay so radiation compliance how many patients on 100% of the planned radiation dose it, it completed in case of um, both in the arm it is almost similar that is 94% in case of cisplatin rtm while it is in case of 93.3% in case of nematozoans cisplatin and rtm so almost all patients that is almost 94% patients in both arm they can complete the uh, planned radiation dose next slide and chemotherapy compliance so in the chemotherapy compliance it is proportion of patients who can complete the cisplatin dose um it is um, more than seven cycle of cisplatin is almost 81% 81.7% in case of control arm that is cisplatin and rt while in case of 80 in, in case of trial arm that is nematozoans cisplatin and rt it is 84.3% patients and dose reduction of cisplatin in required almost 8.7 percent in case of cisplatin radiation arm while in case of nematozoans of cisplatin and radiation arm it is 9.7 not much difference almost comparable between the two arm next slide in in literature it is found that almost 30% of patients do not receive the third third dose of cisplatin if it is given as a 3 weekly as 100 mg per meter square but in this trial it is given as 30 mg per meter square and it is given weekly so almost most of the patients they can um, they can um, they can complete the um, all the cycles all the cycles means almost seven cycle of cisplatin in this trial next slide and the results the progression free survival at two years at two years in case of uh, track control arm that is chemotherapy with rt it is 50.1 while in case of try in case of trial arm it is 60.8 month that is almost 12 percent increase in the in primary end point that is progression free survival the hazard ratio is 0.69 and p value is also 0.0044 so it has given a progression free survival at two years almost more than 12% compared to the control arm second next slide and primary endpoint other progression free survival in case if we consider other part like um, like oropharyngeal carcinoma or non oropharyngeal disease or stage 3 stage 4 it all the all the diseases it favors nemotuzumab in case of control arm 
compared to the control arm. So addition of pneumothorium it leads to a significant benefit. It it has a consistent benefit across all subgroup of patients. Next slide. Okay. The secondary one important secondary endpoint was the degree, disease free survival. At two years, they have shown the disease free survival in the trial arm it is 60.2 percent, while in case of control arm it is 48.5 percent. That is more than 11 11 point almost almost 12 percent percent. They have um, there is disease free survival in case of um, in case of by addition of nematozoma. Next slide. Then um, local regional control. Local regional control in case of trial arm it is 67.5 percent, while in case of control arm it is 57.5 percent. That is more than 10 percent increase in the uh, local regional control with addition of nematozoma biomap. Next slide. Then secondary endpoint. Uh, one important secondary endpoint is the overall survival. And overall survival it has the, those patients who have P16 negative oropharyngeal carcinoma, it is found that it is the highest, that is 57.6% in case of trial arm, while in case of 39% only in case of control arm. So uh, risk of depth with after addition of biomap along with cisplatin RT, it is 37% risk reduction with addition of hemotuzumab. Next slide. So this, this, this study has published in the Onco target and it has shown that pneumotism of cisplatin and RT versus uh, cisplatin RT in HPV negative or pharyngeal carcinoma. The pneumotism of addition of pneumotism, it improved the overall survival, it improved the progression free survival, local regional, local regional control, and disease free survival in case of um, addition of pneumotism. Next slide. So uh, HPV is an important factor in case of uh, adenic cancer. And it is a uh, quite challenging challenge because um, the anatomical locations along with multiple physiological function associated with this structure make open surgical resection a difficult procedure. And also locally advanced in oropharyngeal carcinoma, concurrent chemo radiation is the primary management of approach. So prognosis of the tumor, these are heavily dependent upon the HPV positive status. If a patient is HPV positive, they have a favorable disease prognosis. While those who have HPV negative, these are mainly tobacco associated and they have a very poor response to treatment. And in case of HPV positive disease, it is found that the um, incidence of Malignancy, it is 81% in North America, while in India, Indian's perspective, it is more far less. It is HP positive status is only 23%. And yeah, next slide. On the subgroup analysis of the oropharyngeal carcinoma in HPV negative patients. So in the subgroup analysis, it was found that it one uh, 187 patients were HPV negative oropharyngeal carcinoma and 91 in the chemo radiation arm and 96 in the pneumotozoma chemo radiation arm. So in this trial, the both HPV negative and HPV positive cancers are equally distributed in the both control and trial arm. Next slide. So um, evidence of pneumotozoma with chemo RT in subgroup analysis of HPV negative oropharyngeal carcinoma. And it has shown that Nemotizuma additions, it increased the median progression free survival of around 35.3 months, while in case of only MORTM, it is 12.9 months. And local regional control also increased with nematozuma, that is 60.3 months, while in case of MORTM, it is 17.3 months. Median overall survival is also increased. It is almost double, that is in case of nematozuma, it is 36 months, and while in case of MORTM, it is only 19 month. Next slide. Okay, so uh, this again, this trial it is published in the Onco target. Um, it has shown that nematozumab in phase three sub in phase three subgroup analysis in HPV negative oropharyngeal carcinoma. It has improved overall survival, progressive survival, and it becomes the standard of care now. Um, those patients who are eligible for cisplatin. Next slide. This slide already I have discussed. Uh, 
Next slide. Okay. So important factor in case of head and neck cancer is the quality of life because these patients have difficulty in swallowing, these patients have difficulty in drinking. So quality of life is very much hampered in those patients. And again, addition of a second uh, chemotherapeutic molecule that is addition of nemotizumab, whether this has improved or it has deteriorated the quality of life. It also evaluated in this um, trial that is uh, quality of life in patients with locally advanced head and neck cancer treated with concurrent chemoradiation and cisplatin and nemotizumab versus cisplatin alone. And this trial has shown that with addition of nemotizumab, there is no added increase in the deterioration of quality of life. Next slide. So the quality of life assessed, it is assessed by various methods like URTC quality of life, 30 questionnaires, URTC quality of life, head and neck cancer, 35 person, 1, 1.0. And uh, there are various or quality of life, C30, where global health status, functional scale, symptom scales, all these are points are discussed. So various points like um, fatigue, nausea, vomiting, pain, dyspnea, insomnia, weight loss, appetite loss, diarrhea, these points are uh, discussed in case in this, um, in discussed in this trial. So baseline quality of life, whether it is deteriorated with additions of pneumotizumab, it is checked in this trial. Next slide. So this in this trial has shown that with addition of pneumotizumab, in uh, if we see all the graph, it has shown that with addition of pneumotizumab, there is no added increase in the deterioration of quality of life in case of um, head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. The quality of life if remains same, or or we can say that it is far better compared to the um, cisplatin arm. Next slide. So based on this trial, the, uh, in the in Indian consensus guideline for head and neck cancer management has come, uh, where nemotuzumab it becomes the standard of care now. Next slide. Okay. So this this uh, the Indian consensus guideline it has shown that um, after proper evaluations of the disease status, disease status, disease state. HPV positivity status, the, if the patient came out to be early stage disease, that is P60 negative T1, T2 disease, then we can go for definitive RT. If it is a locally advanced disease, locally advanced oropharyngeal carcinoma, like T3 to T4 disease, or N0 or N plus disease, or N2 to N, or any T with N2 to N3 disease, then the nemotuzumab with concurrent chemo radiations, there is cisplatin radiation, it becomes the standard of care which from this trial. Next slide. So this recommendation, it came from the National Cancer Grid, which has um, gradual, uh, which has regularly, um, re regularly updated the management protocol for various cancer based on the Indian prospective trials and also Indian head and neck cancer control. Consensus guideline it has given that that in case of locally advanced oral referential carcinoma, nemotuzumab which is patent it becomes the standard of care. Next slide. So the conclusion from all this study um, from now it is that headache cancer is our own problem because it is more common in India compared to the Western populations. More our patients more they have HPV negative tobacco associated headache cancer. Till now, cisplatin is a standard of care with evolving of new molecules like cisduximab or nemotuzumab. This standard of care gradually changing from cisplatin. Now, nemotuzumab becomes the standard of care with those patients who are eligible for cisplatin. Nemotuzumab plus chemoart has improved overall survival in head and neck squamous cell carcinoma without any negative impact. The important point in case of head and neck carcinoma, the impact on the quality of life. The quality of life it increased. It is not anyhow affected with addition of second molecule that is nemotuzumab. So the with from all this trial, the landmark trial from uh, TMH Mumbai, the addition of nemotuzumab which is patent, the, the oropharyngeal carcinoma or other carcinoma in the head and neck except the nasopharyngeal nasal cavity, the nemotuzumab it has the greatest role in management. 
So next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Deka. Uh, thank you for enlightening us on the topic. Any questions uh, from the forum? I suppose uh, there are no questions at present. Thank you very much, Dr. Deka. Uh, you Welcome. very well explained ki why uh, you very well explained that going beyond chemo radiotherapy is very essential as far as uh, uh, locally advanced cancers are concerned. You told us that how aggressive they are, and a very interesting thing that you told us that head and neck cancers they increase the probability of having other cancers in the same region. They increase the risk of having other cancers in the same region. And uh, you told us the advantages and disadvantages of only chemo radiation and chemo, uh, and, uh, sorry, chemo radiation versus radiation. You told us what are the advantages and disadvantages uh, and what would happen uh, if cetuximab and cisplatin were added, added. And then you explained very well about the safety profile of nemotuzumab you told us how uh, how uh, safe it is, uh, and you, then you talked about the crosstalk with the immune system, and uh, you told us about the challenges, the anatomical challenges in the treatment, and the last but not the least, you told us why quality of life is very important as far as treatment yes. of locally advanced uh, head and neck cancer mm -hmm. is concerned, and that very important point regarding the HPV status. You told us in India, yeah. twenty-two percent. Uh, very, very less than America, uh, the HPV status is um, uh, actually important uh, or the causative factor as far as head and neck cancers are concerned. Sir, thank you very much. It was a pleasure listening to you. It is due to people like you, due to doctors like you, that we are able to fight this cancer very well and create hope in the world. Thank you very much, Dr. Deka. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Shivam. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll, Thank you. Welcome. Sir.